Okay, so uh, welcome to today's uh, next level session. As always, um, go ahead and ch chat your comments into the chat box. Um, yesterday's session, we did a QA, and a We'll do much the same today. Um, I have a couple of little things that I'll share as always, um, but you can see here at insiderealestate.com slash webinars, it redirects to this playlist. Uh, we can see all our latest stuff. Um, and what you'll want to do is if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, just go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button at the bottom of the YouTube player. Um, so uh, first thing I wanted to share, uh, I was just kind of revamping my deal links page right here. Uh, so I was thinking I might spend a few minutes turning this funnel back on, so to speak, um, and kind of show you guys uh, what a funnel like this uh, might look like. And, you know, I use the words growth system or funnel in it interchangeably, uh, but every funnel kind of starts with building out the thing, uh, the something interesting that somebody would opt in for. Um, and to me, this makes for a really good lead magnet, right? Or the thing that they're opting in for. And what it is, is a bunch of different links to different deal types in your area. And I really like the word deal. And I like this kind of focus for basically anybody in the business. If you're looking for kind of a unique hook or a USP, um, and maybe you're just getting started, you just got licensed, right? Um, this idea of, hey, uh, getting people to opt in for different links for different kinds of deals is an easy thing to pull off, and it's an easy thing to get people to opt in for. So what I've done here is I've created a custom page in my KV Core site, and I've listed income properties, foreclosures, fixers, land listings, uh, recently priced, reduced income properties, uh, properties with motivated sellers. Let me see if that one has anything on it. I'm actually curious. Uh, the way that I built the motivated sellers one was by using the keyword motivated uh, in the advanced search. So it did find eight properties like that. Um, and you could do the same in your market. Just think of these different criteria uh, and create the links. Now, each of these is a squeeze link built from the lead engine. So if you go to the lead engine in KV Core, and you click build squeeze page, you can generate these various links. And then I put them on a custom page, which you can do from web and IDX. You go to web content. And then right here, you go to this custom pages and you can see I have my deal links option. So, uh, so that's that. I kind of like listed them all out here. And then the other thing that's going on, I just refreshed this video. I think the old one was one I made on one of these sessions as a demo, it wasn't very good. <laughs> So I just redid it. I put on the shirt for the company and, you know, looked a little more professional with my backwards hat, but, you know, cleaned it up a little bit. And basically what I say in the video is, hey, thanks for accessing the links. Uh, definitely, I tell them to bookmark the page and I invite them to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me if they want to talk about their search. And then they can click and schedule through Calendly, um, you know, uh, a Zoom discussion, right? And it would link, you know, link Calendly up to Zoom right there. So this is a kind of a cool streamlined way to get people uh, interacting with you. Um, so uh, Rich is asking, is there a way to put Calendly onto the page? So it's very obvious. Yeah, I'm sure there is actually. Um, I haven't done that, but I know that Calendly gives you embed code, Rich. So that's a really good point. So you could use the embed code um, right here. I'm actually not using Calendly myself. I was, I'm in the process of switching this over to something else. Uh, but when I say Calendly, I just mean your scheduling software. Uh, yeah, so, so that's what I did. I have it right here, Rich, uh, Rose. So it says email if you have any questions about your privacy or to schedule a Zoom call to discuss your criteria, click here. Now I could make this bigger with some HTML or put a button here. I may do that. And in the video, I, I do the same thing. My call to action at the end of the video, you see me pointing down there. I'm telling them to go ahead and schedule if they want. Now this is the, this is the lead magnet, right? This is where people land. And if they're on my site, you can see up in the navigation up at the top right here, they can actually go directly to this page, right? If they want. But the page that I want to put in front of this is going to be a KV Core landing page, right? So free weekly list of Pinellas County real estate deals, cash flowing income properties, pre foreclosures, bank on REOs, land for sale, motivated sellers, property and price structures, and more. And so this is the kind of landing page that I put in front of that. And then this would redirect over to the deal links page, right? So I build the magnet and then I build a lead capture portal you know, capture element that people go through to opt in. And uh, what I might do today, just for demo purposes, I might actually run a Facebook ad, uh, you know, to this, just to show you what it looks like. And uh, yeah, if we have time, and I don't, I don't see a lot of questions coming in. But this, I know from history that this offer works really well. The other really cool thing about this niche 
is that if you want to go shopping for deals, right, you can go find properties, uh, focus maybe on stuff that's vacant so you're not bothering sellers, but you can actually go out, um, find, find properties first. If you see something that's interesting, take a video and then you can email it out to everybody who's opted in here. And those, that kind of content where you're kind of out in the field, taking a video or talking about giving some inside knowledge about specific listings, uh, you know, stuff like, hey, uh, this is listed as a two bedroom, but really you can squeeze a three out of here, right? Stuff like that. Uh, that really helps build rapport. People get to know you in those videos. And it's just, there's just an unlimited amount of content out there in the marketplace for you to create. Like I can click on fixer uppers right now on my own list here. I get sorted from lowest to highest. Right. And then I can find something interesting, like a shell. And then I can go and check that property out. And, you know, I can send an email uh, describing it, uh, talking about, you know, how, how I feel about the price, what's the, the rehab value in this case as a fixer upper. If I can get permission from the uh, listing agent, maybe I can take a video, right, and send that over. So uh, I like that it kind of just makes it easy. All of these property, search based, you know, hooks, make it easy. If you're offering new construction or open houses, your follow-up content is always related to that. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, pretty easy to set up. Now, what I can do now, and I think what I will do, how about instead of Facebook, let's go run a Google ad to this. Okay, so I'm going to go run a Google uh, pay-per-click ad that goes directly to this link. So I'll go to ads.google.com. Uh, Patricia's asking, do you usually get bottom feeders? Love That's a good question. Um, you get, so what's really cool about this is you get all, everybody. Um, so you do get the guys who just finished the investment seminar, right? And they, they want to offer, you know, 65% of ARV because they're following the course and they don't have realistic, you know, <laughs> attitudes about, you know, how easy this is because they've taken a course and, and it, you know, they've got the wrong ideas. Uh, and then part of your job is to kind of educate them on that and, and try to really make sure they're qualified and ready, you know, especially the guys who are not coming with their own money, right? They're, they're kind of bird dogging for other investors. So that does happen. Uh, but the other thing that happens is you get the homeowner down the street who uh, knows that real estate investing is a vehicle for wealth. Everybody kind of knows that. And they're just kind of curious. They opt in, right? And they're like, yeah, I've got my primary residence. I've got some equity. Maybe I do want to buy the first investment property, right? So, you know, you get to be consultative on that side of things. Maybe you help them pick, pick, pick up their first or second investment property. But what do you have? You have somebody who owns a home in your market who could list with you someday. So I just really like this niche as kind of a foot in the door. Uh, and it's something that uh, kind of because of the spirit of your question that a lot of other agents don't want to go down that path. They assume they're going to end up working with fixer uppers or dangerous properties or low end stuff all day. And it's just not the case. Um, and in fact, if you wanted to weed that stuff out, this could easily say a free weekly list of uh, cash flowing income properties, you know, uh, priced from 1 million plus. So if you want to go for the upper, <laughs> you know, the higher end of that, that's definitely, you know, you can just focus on multifamily income property stuff. So, um, yeah, you will get the bottom feeders. Uh, but, you know, if you're of the mind that you're just trying to build a database in your market and just put as many people into KV Core as possible to have conversations about real estate, it's just a good entry. And, you know, even the bottom feeders or people who want to rent know somebody who has a lot of money who might want to buy an income property or something. Um, do, 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 do. So Brett's asking, do you ever do admin version of these trainings? Um, we have a series, Brett, um, that Ernest and I did. Let me, um, on our YouTube channel called Team Tactics. It's actually on the courses page too. Um, but we did about six or seven of these. I haven't done one in a while. I'm mostly just bandwidth, you know, haven't gotten around to it, but we, we can probably start doing them again. Here it is, Team Leader Tactics. And I'll share that with everybody. Um, but it's basically geared toward helping team leaders and admins, you know, kind of get their team engaged and stuff like that. So if you guys want to share that. <sighs> yep. And Brett says fixer uppers lead to flippers, two-sided opportunities. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you build a relationship with the right flippers, 
Uh, I know those guys, you know, have their own issues, <laughs> but uh, if you build, if you find a few that are loyal, it could be a nice uh, stream of listings for you. Um, and again, we're in a market right now where things are easy for, you know, people who are fixing and flipping and, you know, the, the thing flies off the market, but when things get a little tighter, uh, they really do value uh, a, a solid listing agent, you know, somebody who really knows what they're doing. And you, my experience, people reciprocate when you're helping them find good deals that a lot of times they'll give you the listing back when they're done with it. So, um, so going back into Google, sorry for the diversion there. So we're in our Google account. I'm going to go click here and do new campaign. And I'm going to advertise this deals links page right here. So I'll just click leads, continue, search, continue. I'm going to do this quick, guys. I, I, we have training like about this in the next level members area, but if you just watch the flow that I'm going through right now, it's pretty much the same. Um, it's funny. They want the website. They don't usually require that. But they want it this time. Um, but this flow, it's kind of a wizard in Google. And if you just watch what I'm doing, it's fairly easy to do. And what I'm going to do is instead of trying to run this ad for the niche, like people searching for fixers and foreclosures, I'm just going to show it for anybody searching for real estate in my area. Uh, and that's a, kind of a tactic, um, kind of a tactic you can employ to still get a lot of traffic, but make sure to have people replying to that specific idea. So I'll just set this to $10 a day. I don't like to set a target CPA right here. I just leave that empty so Google can kind of figure it out. Continue. Okay, and then you see here, home listings, home for sale. It's trying to find all the relevant keywords. And instead of doing that, I'm just gonna type uh, St. Pete Florida real estate in the suggestion box here. And here's all the stuff people are searching nearby. 11 clicks per day. This is telling me how many uh, clicks I might get and the, uh, what they think a lead's gonna cost $9. It's not always accurate. Um, and I'm just going to roll with this. Now, this is going to be broad match. Um, I like to change these to, to phrase match uh, afterwards, and I'll, I'll do that at the very end to show you that. Like that, Patricia? <laughs> I just forgot. I just forgot to put the camera on. I, I do sometimes forget to just put it on. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, I get your point, though. Yeah. And, and your, your comment about, you know, feeling more connected to the presenter um, and stuff. I really, I haven't had time personally, you know, in my own practice in the local market, but if you guys could start doing webinars like this and have your face on camera and educating about the local market, you're going to kind of get that effect of the people watching for you too. So that's a good point. So I'll try to keep, I'll try to get my camera on. I kind of just forget sometimes. All right. So um, I've got the URL right here that the link is going to. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of write the ad out and say uh, Pinellas County real estate deals. So I'm going to get rid of county because it was too long. Now, Google switched this recently, and I think it's a pain in the butt. Um, basically, you used to be able to just write out your ad in order. So you'd write line one, line two, line three. Now, in order to do that, you need to click this little tack thing right here and say, I want this to be in position one. And then you say fixers, reduced income, et cetera. Uh, priced from the low 100s, 100Ks, like that. And then there, and then there. So what this did is I said, hey, uh, I want this in second position. I want this in third position. Otherwise, Google wants you to write a bunch of different headlines and then let them decide how to rotate it. Um, and I don't like that. <laughs> I, I know that if I just say what it is, um, I give a little description and I include a number about the price range. That's a good template for real estate. And choose what I roll with. Uh, and just say, um, free weekly list shows you all the latest deals in Pinellas County. 
see the current, see the list now. And Pinellas, sometimes you got to play with your, your spaces. See the current list now. Um, if you're looking for a opportunity for solid, solid opportunities in Pinellas, you'll like this. Yeah. And these, I'll let them rotate. So I just did the two right here, and then I'm not going to use the tax. I like Google kind of jumble those up a little bit. So hit done, save and continue. And now anybody Googling real estate related stuff in my area will now see an ad for this page. Um, so it says typically it takes one or two days. Usually they're getting it reviewed the same day in my experience. And then the last thing I want to do, I did that broad match thing, uh, which basically means like anything related, Google will just give me a click for it. Um, it's probably fine. Their AI has gotten pretty smart, but uh, just habit I have is I'll go back into the campaign and then I'll go into the settings of the campaign, into the keywords of the campaign. Oops. They've moved this on me here. Let me click into the campaign. And now I'm in all the keywords. And now what I can do is I can uh, check this off. Yes, uh, Brent, I'll show you an example here in just a second. So what I was showing you is I'm going to just check off all those keywords. And I'm not obsessing over keywords. A lot of people I talk to about um, Google ads just get so hung up on these keywords. Um, you know, so select all 25. Uh, and you really don't have to. You can go back later and fix it. Uh, now, there are some businesses where obsessing over keywords would make sense. Or if you have a really high spend, it makes sense. But I'm only trying to get five to 10 clicks a day. Uh, this is plenty to get me five to 10 relevant clicks a day. So I don't waste a lot of time. Uh, and then what I'm doing is changing my match type. So I'm checking this off, clicking edit, and then change map type. And then I want to say change all match types, choose match type, and then I'm going to do phrase and hit apply. This isn't super critical, but um, if you feel like you're getting a lot of junk traffic or not getting great conversions, that, that could help. Um, and then I'll now I'll show you an ad that we've had running for a while that is kind of of the same ilk. It's kind of a similar um, approach where we're running a niche focused ad, right? Around a certain type of property list. Um, so that ad will be findable here in a second. Here's the keywords for that one, 24. And then my ads, here they are, Brent. So, um, so uh, St. Pete, new construction, hundreds of homes and condos, price from the low 200s. It's pretty similar to what I just did, right, for the deals, St. Pete, Florida, new construction. And I haven't touched these in a long time. But if you look over here at the numbers for both ads, the this one has generated 487 leads. This one has generated 201 leads for a, uh, nine bucks or so each at a, a solid conversion rate of 11%. Um, and if, believe me, uh, so $6,400, sure. Uh, but 688 leads, these are people searching on Google for real estate in our market. This ROI is like crazy. But this is, this is, this is the type of, you know, they're looking for real estate in the market. They see this ad, they opt in. As long as you're following up, um, this is one commission, right? So if you get a 1% conversion rate on these 688 leads, you do six or seven deals on this crop, then you're good. So uh, so how are you defining conversion? So the way the conversion is tracked by Google is that they opt in, they get to the page and they become a lead in KV Core. So uh, part of this setup process is that you need to put your conversion pixels from the Google platform into KV Core. Um, so I, I've done full webinars on this. Maybe next week I'll do it full end to end. Um, but if you look in the in, at insiderealestate.com slash webinars, I'm sure we have one and there's definitely training step-by-step -step how to set up your whole uh, Google ads uh, approach. But what I just created then was a full funnel. My traffic source is Google. It goes to this page, right? They, they opt in. 
and then they go to my deal links page and on my deal links page, they get to know me because I have a video there. The video is pretty important, I think. Um, and then they can get what they asked for. And then they, if they want to meet with me on Zoom, they can. And then the last step here is to make sure that I send out these links once a week. Now, what I could do is I can build a drip campaign, a smart campaign where it has one email in it. And it just says, hey, here's the latest Pinellas County deal deals, right? And I can just keep sending them back to this link because all of these squeeze links are always up to date with the latest listings if I wanted to be lazy. So I'll answer a few questions. Maybe we'll set that up. Um, so uh, Rose is asking, uh, which do you prefer more, Facebook ads or Google ads? Uh, I really like Facebook ads for filling my funnel at an affordable cost per lead and to get name, email, phone numbers so that I can send auto text. So I'm a little biased toward Facebook ads, but uh, Facebook ads are a longer term kind of prospect. Uh, because those people don't have as much intent as the Google people. They're just getting interrupted on Facebook. They opt in. Cool. They live in my market. They start getting info from me. And I know over time, you know, it comes back, right? It, you, you're just building your database and, and generating conversations. Google, if you're, if you want to have people who are, have more intent, they're actually looking for real estate. You have a better chance of somebody who came off a of Google ad jumping in the car with you this weekend. Um, so they both have their upsides in a perfect world. If you have the budget, you're doing both. And you're just blending those together. Yep. So um, that's why usually we tell people, you know, if you can do both, do it. Um, one, th one thing that um, kind of uh, Shane over at Bond Street Mortgage and I kind of arrived at together a little bit is this idea that uh, one, one good one, two punch would be to drive the initial click from Google, right? So they're coming here, they have high intent and then retarget that traffic with Facebook. So, you know, pixel them and then start showing them ads on Facebook. That's kind of an interesting one-two punch as well. Um, yeah, and then uh, there was a question about, can you retarget on, on uh, Google? Absolutely, Patricia, you, you definitely can. Um, so you can build retargeting audiences the same way you can on Facebook, uh, on Google. So uh, to cover all this stuff on today's session would be challenging for me you know, to do all at once, but I will just reference the um, next level members area here have to sign into it. And if you go to the um, tutorials and how to's under Google ads, it shows you step by step what to do. And it shows you how to do the retargeting campaigns down here in the last video, but this will kind of walk you through step by step. Uh, I might need to, this is about a year old, maybe like 10 months old now. Uh, so it may look a little different. And I think about it, it's, it's kind of a constant battle for me. Uh, you know, for people who record tutorials about these platforms because they're constantly changing, but it should be more or less the same flow. Yeah, great point, Brent. It, Facebook is more impulsive. And a lot of times that's why you'll get a, a lead off from a property boost ad or one of our Facebook products. And the person will be like, I didn't do that. They just don't remember. They just clicked off Facebook real quick. It collected their info that came, you know, or they're blowing you off. That happens too. You know, they, they do remember, but they're not that interested. Um, Whereas in Google, yeah, it's somebody who's actively searching. Yeah, Brent, Brent says he gets that a lot from Facebook. That's why I don't even call him. <laughs> I know it sounds silly uh, in some ways, but you know, if you're getting the lead, if you're running your own Facebook traffic, you can get leads for between two, three, four dollars. Uh, you know, if you're doing it through a service, maybe it's five, six, seven, you know, with property boost, maybe even a little more. But even at like 10 bucks a lead, right? Um, if I can send an auto text and I can get 20% of them to reply back um, and I'm paying hundred dollars to get in a conversation instead of spending my whole day trying to call people who are just, just blowing me off anyway. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of the auto text and just deal with what comes in. And then, you know, if you're sending this content out on a regular basis, like back to the deals example, I know that if I go out every week and I find an interesting fixer upper or a, a cash flowing income property, and I do some work, it's been a half hour, like, presenting that property, you know, doing true brokerage. I, I create a video about it or, or a blog post. I know that if I send that stuff out every week, I don't really need to worry about calling people because they're going to be, they're going to call me, you know, they're, they're just going to want to engage with that content. So it's that whole attraction marketing kind of approach there. Great. Yeah. Under two, Brent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got some that are, that are going pretty good. I fell out of, fell out of practice a little bit. I was feeling sad because I was running some Google lead form ads. Um, I feel like I helped invent a lot of this in real estate because I've been doing it since 2011 and had a course back then when lead ads first came out, 
used to get them real cheap. <laughs> and I'm like, wah, wah, wah. I'm getting some at like 12 bucks last week or a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I got to get back on my game. So I got this condos one going at $1.80, which, which made me feel happier. <laughs> it's like I still got it a little bit. And then the uh, the seller one I've been talking about, that's fine, $11 for somebody who's opting in for you know a home value report. But definitely. Yeah, I was even before Client Alchemist. That's Josh's next rodeo, Patricia. <laughs> even before that. Um, that's great, Brent. So you're using listings to leads. Uh, that's all right, Patricia. I'm kidding around. Yeah. Josh and I had something called Reticulous back in the day. Uh, listings to leads. Are they still doing, um, are those still landing pages? I'm just gonna take a quick look at them. They've been around a good long time now. Um, they give you, yeah, they give you the landing page. And, uh, I wonder, do they have like a Facebook ad creation wizard inside of their platform now? That's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. We should just love to have stuff like this in our marketplace eventually. Very cool. Cool. So uh, I'm going to, let's see, Angela's question here, Angelica. Um, yes, great question. All right. So that was kind of my spiel for today. Just giving you a look at this funnel. Um, I did say that I would show you the building of that campaign. Um, so what I was getting at as a basic smart campaign would be to add one email. Could even be a text that goes out every week. Think about it. I'm going to say this Pinellas weekly deals list, right? You can say, hi, here's the link to this week's Pinellas County real estate deal links. Here's the link. Something like that. Click here. All right. And then I would just link it to this page. I, I would be a little, I would spend a little more time with it than this, but if you wanted to, I can add that template, oh, deals. Did I talk about this yesterday or was that on a meeting with somebody else? I'm sorry if this is repetitive for some of you guys who are here multiple days, um, but when I create the campaign, so, right, let's just, I create the campaign based on deals. I'm just gonna kind of go through the wizard real quick. Uh, the, the thing I wanna show you that is interesting for all of these link-based kind of follow-up funnels um, is that you can, oh, <laughs> I think I did this before, but you can just add that same email, right? So deals list, I can add it on day seven. Day seven, right? So add, and then I can add it on, you can do the same exact email, the same template. Right, it's the same email, and then I would do it on day 14. And so on. So if you're doing open houses, new construction, say you're doing an open house offer, uh, opt in for a free list of all the open houses in Dallas County. You would just just send them back, keep sending them back to the same link. Now, the interesting thing about sending them back to this page is they get to, they hear my video over and over again. My call to action, click here. They keep seeing my click here for the Zoom call, uh, but the links are always up to date right here. So, just a little hack there uh, from that. All right. So, uh, the question that Angelica had was, uh, can I have is there a way to keep a core allows you to upload a spreadsheet of clients' personal data without having to do it individually? Yes, you can do lead imports, but I'm going to have a better option for you. I just want to show you where that is. You can go to lead engine and then bulk lead import. You can do that. Um, but the better thing for you is going to be to use Zapier because you're, you, it sounds like you're using a form, right? So if you have a form somewhere on a third party platform like Typeform or Formstack or whatever you might be using, you can use zapier.com. And you can push leads in. So you can create a zap. 
And I don't think you need the paid Zapier. Don't hold me to that. But if you say if you're using Google Forms, I don't think you need the paid Zapier to use Google Forms. So yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, you can import notes. Yep, notes is an option, I think, in that flow. Because I think when you submit a file, I think there's a you're allowed to have a notes column. Uh, for Facebook, you do need paid Zapier. That's correct, Sandra, right? To, to bridge it, Facebook over. Uh, so for Google ads, how can we add them for hash? How can we add hashtags to them? So I didn't show you guys the creation of this landing page, but when I created this landing page, I put a hashtag in the creation of the landing page. So I'd say so you, you always, so if you want to make, if you really want to track and you're using landing pages, you know, or you're using squeeze links, it, it's easier then. But you might make the landing page fresh for every traffic source if you really want to uh, focus in on it like that and know that it came from Google. Uh, for my money, I'm kind of happy just to be able to look in Google and see the cost per conversion because Google's tracking it for me. Uh, but if you really want to know, then you could build a separate landing page for each traffic source and have a slightly different hashtag. But yeah, good question. Uh, so Carl, Carol's asking what I think making it rain. That's a company specific Google uh, uh, service. Yeah, it'll it'll kind of do what I just showed you. So uh, my take is it's not too hard to do on your own. Google in particular is not not crazy uh, difficult. Um, making it rain. I don't know. It's not our product. Um, it's in, it's in our marketplace, but we put it in there for your company. Um, I don't know how many how much margin they take or anything like that. So you know, there's always a trade off between doing it yourself and paying for it, but you know, yeah, it's a, it's a straight up service. It's similar to our in-house uh, Google ad service as well. Uh, now, the one thing about the, the one thing about these uh, services we have in marketplace, you know, like, or making it rain um, is that they're pretty, they work fine. They work great, you know, but they're pretty generic, right? You're, you're kind of getting just a generic kind of cookie cutter, like search for real estate in my area. Uh, I'm a huge fan of niching things down like what I've shown you today. And, and that's what I like to do on these next level sessions is show you guys uh, if, if you want to start to kind of take some of this on on your own is kind of inspire a little bit, give you ideas. Um, and when you do get niched like this, your results can be better, you know, around the niche. And, and I think business is more fun if you have like, if you get to be known as the specialist for a certain type of property, you know. Um, uh, good question for Rich. Yeah, when you build the landing page in KB Core, do you need a zap to get the info into KB Core? No, you do not. So the only time you need the zap is if you're using third-party applications. So landing pages, you know, that's a KB Core feature, and these are all tied together. But if you're using Google Forms or you're using Facebook lead ads, then you're going to need Zapier to bridge it into to KB Core. Good questions, guys. So I think that's all the questions. I'll wait a minute or two more, but if if I feel like that's a pretty tidy session here. Um, Sherry raised her hand. What you got, Sherry? You can just chat over here. Um, no problem. No problem. I do that too sometimes. No problem. Um, so great, guys. Uh, yeah, Rose, you're asking again about Google ads. How can we hashtag them? So you don't hashtag the actual ad. Let me ask, answer that again. You, you need to make sure that wherever the click goes off your Google ad, that you've set up a hashtag. So when you build your landing page, you would put a hashtag here. So then a click from Google comes to your landing page and then, and then the hashtag will get injected into KV Core when somebody submits the landing page. And then the other thing that you can do uh, with Google ads. Incidentally, I found that the conversion rates off squeeze pages and landing pages, pretty similar. Um, you know, you can play with it, but they're pretty similar either way. But if you were to just kind of say, hey, get a list of new construction, like we're doing at Forever Florida, um, you can just put the hashtag here in your squeeze link. And that's the other way to do it too. So the hashtag, uh, maybe a better way to put that is hashtags are created um, via the landing page to squeeze link or if you're doing zaps from third parties, when you build your zap, there's a spot to add a hashtag in the zap. That might be part of what you're asking. Yeah. But you don't need the zaps for Google. Uh, Rich, yes. Uh, so Rich is asking, have they considered a way to post Facebook ads from KV Core? Uh, we've talked a lot about that. 
um, it's, it, it, it never gotten around to it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm hopeful that someday we are now, what I hope that we're going to develop soon is a way is some more options with our Facebook ad products so that you can at, off the shelf kind of click and do these niche ads like real estate deals or you know construction fixers and so on. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're looking at all that. It's uh, you know, one of the issues with a product that does as much as KV core does that it's hard for the development team to get to everything. Um, it's just a challenge, you know? So there's lots of idea, more ideas than time. Um, So, uh, Angela, Jelka, your question. Uh, your company may be merging. Uh, so, to make sure that that info goes under each individual, uh, do you mean your individual agents? If, if you're doing a transfer of data, say, from one KV Core instance to another, you're definitely going to want to get all the data out um, and make sure that you have it in the spreadsheet that specifies who the agent signee is, um, who the, you know, uh, you don't have all the details, the hashtags, everything. Um, so the, the quick answer to that is try to get your data into a sheet and then go to the bulk lead import here. And then you see this, let us handle it. I'm pretty sure you can, yeah, you can schedule a time to talk to one of our lead config specialists about that very thing to make sure that it gets done right efficiently. They, they would probably rather talk to you before you send the file, or make sure you have the file right. So the link to the library where we have all these webinar replays is inside realestate.com slash webinar. So I'll share that here, Maria. And then we do have our next level kind of like training library, um, which is a kind of a premium thing. It's, it's 19 a month where we have like kind of the step-by-step -step how to's um, that is under coaching and training uh, under Next Level Mastermind here, if that's what you're asking. Okay, guys, I'm going to call it a day. I want to go see what Jerome Powell is saying to tank the markets. Anybody else wondering? Um, he should be going live right about now or has already. Um, and I want to see if he's, oh, yeah, look at that. If he's, see, look, things are going haywire. <laughs> We'll see what's going on there. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I think Heather's going to come on with something tomorrow. I may or may not be on, but uh, definitely uh, we'll be back at the same time tomorrow, guys. And in the meantime, uh, check us out in the Facebook group, Inside Real Estate.